Two easy wins for Missouri football and basketball. But let's take a bigger picture look, including what the Tiger football team has to play for on Black Friday against Arkansas. Let's talk about that coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. Thanks for making Locked on Mizzou your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And you know what? Quite frankly, I might miss a couple days this week, at least here during Thanksgiving. And also, to be honest, this past week, this past Saturday against New Mexico State, the first game I've missed because of an illness in I don't remember when. I don't think I've ever missed a Missouri football game because of illness, but my goodness, my wife and I were incapacitated. It was not pretty, ladies and gentlemen, but fortunately, I'm back and better than ever. Did what did manage to take in the Missouri Mississippi Valley State basketball game yesterday. So I, I did get a few fan points back there. But you know what? Let's, let's of course, lead with football. And Missouri obviously dominated New Mexico State. From the beginning, perhaps you would have liked to have seen the Missouri run game outside of Brady Cook get going a little bit more, that's for sure. And, well, you know, frankly, Eli Drinkwitz had – some criticisms for the Mizzou defense as well, just saying, hey, they just kind of played okay. But for the most part, I think that game checked the boxes that you wanted to see. Missouri dominated it, and we moved on. Except, unfortunately, in those type of games, one box that was not checked, in my opinion, is, well, Missouri looking a little bit more banged up. A lot of guys feeling it. Tyron Hopper left the game. I thought he was limping noticeably after that ball game. Chris Abrams drain left early. Barrett Bannister took a big hit after Sam Horn was brought into the ball game. He looked okay after the game, so I don't want to speculate. But again, it's quite possible that Isaiah McGuire and Joseph Charleston could could possibly miss next week. They had some injury concerns coming out of there as well. So that's a real concern for Missouri after, since they're going to be facing an Arkansas squad that dominated Ole Miss impressively this past Saturday. But Missouri at five and six right now actually has a lot to play for, despite the fact that they're probably going to a bowl game regardless. At least that's my understanding right now. But Six and six versus five and seven. Well, that's going to get you a quite different bowl outcome more than likely. In fact, if Missouri does get to six and six, it's looking like the Liberty Bowl is an option. And as we discussed previously on this podcast, you never know. Missouri and Kansas could play in that game, especially with Kansas losing to Texas in pretty humiliating fashion this past weekend as well. And by the way, I just came to realize something, that the annual Texas and Kansas football game has now become a real delight for me because it's a win-win regardless. I'm going to have somebody to make fun of one way or the other. So that's a real loss with the Longhorns coming to the Southeastern Conference. But reading Gabe DeArmond's uh, 10 thoughts at PowerMizzou.com this morning, I did notice that he said that I'm not sure that if Missouri gets the opportunity to play Kansas in the Liberty Bowl, he's not sure that the Tigers really want it. In other words, there's more to lose than to win for the Tigers. And boy, that's that was just a disappointing sentence to read. And I'm not getting mad at Gabe or anything. I, I just hate this idea that suddenly teams are afraid of competition or maybe coaches just shouldn't be in charge of scheduling. Maybe we need a, a central sanctioning body to make up the non-conference schedules, just like we have central bodies called conferences that make up those schedules. Because apparently if it were up to the administrators and coaches, well, you would just get 
free victories against Columbia College and Lincoln every season and before we move on to the SEC. And, well, bowl games, ah, the heck with that. We're basically going to either skip those, play backups, or try to play the least opponent possible, or at least the least interesting opponent possible because, God forbid, we have a game that actually gets your fans excited. But you know what? That rant aside, I do just want to point out something that obviously getting to six and six, possibly to seven and six with a bowl victory, well, that looks a heck of a lot different than potentially going to five and seven and then playing a bowl, a crappy bowl in in Birmingham, Alabama, or Shreveport or something, and then losing to a group of five team, not even a high major type team, and going to five and eight. That would be truly disgusting. But if you're Missouri, you don't have the right or really anything, the luxury of turning down any type of bowl opportunity, extra practices, anything. And frankly, if you're going to play that group of five game, just go ahead and start Sam Horn in the game. Much like you started Brady Cook in the Armed Forces Bowl last year, there's no reason not to just throw Horn out there and see what you have at that point. Apparently, one series was enough for Eli Drinkwitz against New Mexico State. And by the way, I thought, obviously, the ball looked pretty good coming out of Horn's hand. He's got got the tools. He's got the arm strength, impressively ran for a first down, definitely put Barrett Bannister in a little bit of jeopardy on that one throw. But I got to be honest, the instinct to fit the ball in there into a tight window doesn't upset me whatsoever. But I will say that Even though Horn has the tools, we still haven't learned anything about him yet. Listen, Zach Wilson for the New York Jets was the number two overall pick just a couple years ago. He has all the physical tools, too, and I think we can tell how that one's going. The bottom line is, while this has obviously been a somewhat disappointing season for Missouri fans, and obviously five and seven would be really, really disappointing. But at the same time... You could have realistically beaten Kentucky without the without a bizarre play, right? And even a couple more bizarre plays against Auburn. I mean, you're really three pretty bizarre plays. If two out of three of those go right, you're looking at a seven and four team right now. I'm not trying to make excuses here, but obviously if we were sitting here at seven and four, we'd be feeling emotionally a lot more confident about this football team. We'd be telling ourselves, well, we were right there against Florida and Georgia too. My point is, should we really be basing our feelings about the future based on a couple of of bounces, a missed field goal here, a fumble into the end zone there, a, a roughing the punter where the ball's 50 yards behind the line of scrimmage there, a few inches. I, I just think that that's the reason why even though a lot of people are upset with Eli Drinkwitz like right now, if you're my father-in-law, you're even calling him Eli Dorkwitz at this point, which frankly is such low-hanging fruit. I'm surprised I haven't heard it before. But I'm just not going that far because, again, while Missouri has been disappointing this year, and you can bottom line it, bottom line it and say you are what your record is, I'm fine with that. Not trying to make excuses, but at the same time, if you're this close – I think that's reason enough to push forward. And by the way, speaking of bowl season, everybody will officially know the bowl lineups on Sunday, December 4th. So mark that date on your calendars. But you know what? The next day, Monday the 5th, is actually an even more important day in college football. So let's talk about that. But first, today's episode is is brought to you by Simply Safe. And unfortunately, this time of year, as much as I love Thanksgiving, well, a lot of people travel and that leaves you, unfortunately, a little bit vulnerable. Property crimes like burglaries and package thefts, well, they spike this time of year. Well, here's your solution. It's called Simply Safe. And I'll tell you once again, I've said this before, I have personal experience with Simply Safe. It's easy, easy to set up easy to use, and it's the cheapest on the market that I've been able to find, especially for the type of technology and product that you're getting. I'm telling you, you're not going to regret 
Simply Safe. So don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on college. This is their biggest discount of the year. So do not wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on college. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Thanks for making Locked On Mizzou your first listen as per usual. How about for your second lesson? Check out Locked On Sports today from the big games to the biggest stories. Go beyond the box and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. That's Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get a finer a podcast. And... I don't know that bowl season is going to get finer anytime soon. I got to be honest, because now December 5th, the day after, interestingly enough, bowl season will be officially announced. That'll be December 4th on Sunday, but now Monday, the 5th of December, that's when college football players can now officially enter the transfer portal. So if you thought you saw a lot of guys opt out of the bowl game last year with maybe long-term injuries, maintenance, maybe getting some surgery to get them ready for the next season, for instance. Nothing wrong with that, by the way, just a, a new trend for sure. And also guys like Tyler Beatty who have NFL prospects, want to be drafted, who maybe at the last second, the coach decides not to play them. Well, how about this? How about let's throw the portal in there as well? So, Hopefully, if you're a Missouri fan, obviously any college team is going to hope this, but you hope that the guys who enter their name into the portal are simply guys who haven't been getting playing time, maybe looking for a new opportunity. But the reality is with name, image, and likeness, with money being thrown around, there will probably be some surprising names throughout the throughout the landscape that enter the portal that will take a lot of people by surprise on December 5th. So hold on to your butts for a couple more weeks. Now, I really felt like against Kentucky, Brady Cook simply just wasn't good enough. But he's followed that with what Eli Drinkwitz called his best two weeks of the season against Tennessee and, of course, two days ago against New Mexico State. And I would tend to agree with that. I thought Brady was really good for the most part against Tennessee and was borderline really, really good on Saturday. Now, of course, part of that is the opponent, no question about it. But at the same time, it was just nice to see what Brady can do with a mostly clean pocket and a little bit of time to do some stuff. Also, I think Missouri has figured out that they got to lean on his running game more. They figured that that out the last few weeks. They got to play play him more like some teams in the NFL are starting to play their quarterbacks, like the Chicago Bears with Justin Fields, for instance. They were looking like they're still bad. Don't get me wrong, but the point is they've improved the last month or so by leaning a little bit more on Justin Fields and his legs. I think the same is true for Brady Cook and the Tigers. And, well, his passing game has rounded into form the last couple weeks in a lot of ways as well. And also, just frankly, if Ryan Horstcamp, if he's going to be good at tight end, he looked good on that touchdown. Don't get me wrong, he was pretty darn open, but the speed he showed at the end of that play was impressive. A nice block by Cody Schrader to get him free, by the way. But I really liked Horst Camp coming out of high school. He's still only a redshirt freshman. Sometimes it takes, in fact, often, it takes tight ends some time to develop, especially traditional inline tight ends. Well, maybe we're seeing the bust out. I hope that we continue to see it next week and into the bowl because I at this point, as good as Luther Burden has looked this season, I'm expecting expecting him to almost have a similar leap to what Dominic Lovett had from last year to this season, his true freshman year to his sophomore season. So you start thinking about that, regardless of who the Missouri quarterback is next season, well, that's a pretty good start in terms of skill position players in the passing game. If you can just figure out protection a little bit more, 
keep the ground game churning, maybe get a little bit more explosive in the ground game. Well, you've got the beginnings of a better offense next season, I think. At least that's the optimistic take. And speaking of a more explosive running back, it was good to see Tavoris Jones, the true freshman, ballyhooed player out of the state of Texas, with a nice catch out of the backfield. Wasn't just a dump off either. That's something that hasn't really been part of the Missouri offense and was part of the Missouri offense with Tyler Beatty last season in particular is actually throwing the ball to the running back beyond the line of scrimmage. So that was an interesting little wrinkle there and hopefully a part of Jones' game moving forward here with the Tigers. And coming up, Missouri basketball remains undefeated. And I think a lot of this season so far has been about Dennis Gates setting expectations. And yes, that includes for Isaiah Mosley. So let's talk about that coming up. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Yes, our partners at Nissan have worked with us to create a new segment across the Locked On Network called Thrilling Moments. The thrilling designs behind the new lineup from Nissan are intended to empower drivers in vehicles as capable as the drivers themselves. Well, when I think of unbelievable abilities on the field, for this week's thrilling moment, it has to be Luther Burden leaping over defenders, scoring a touchdown, showing exactly what he's capable of. Well, you know what? The Nissans, they're capable of that kind of maneuverability as well. And this segment has been inspired by the thrilling new designs featured across Nissan's new lineup of vehicles. Pursue what thrills you in the all-new Frontier Armada or Pathfinder today, available now at NissanUSA.com. As I pointed out earlier, my father-in-law can be a tough crowd when it comes to sports. Oh, Eli Dorquitz. I'm sorry, man. That that one really was, was kind of low. But you know what? Clifford, he does love Dennis Gates so far. In fact, he used the word love texting me about this basketball team. And I have to agree with him so far. I love what's happening here. And I think Dennis Gates is really establishing expectations here. And I think that actually is the explanation for what's been happening with the up and down usage and minutes of Isaiah Mosley so far. Because I think here it's as simple as this. From what I can tell anyway, I think Dennis Gates expects at least two things specifically from all of his players. He expects them to, number one, share the basketball, and number two, play defense. And really, those two things together, those are the team elements of the game. I don't think you can really play individual defense per se. You have to have great team defense to to have an effective defense. It's as simple as that. Whereas on the offensive end, yeah, you can have just one absolutely special player that can make your offense work. And you don't even really need to be that great at sharing the basketball. But if you do share the basketball, if you do establish that expectation and that culture in your program, well, that's something that can carry you through seasons in which you don't have a top 10 pick in the NBA draft, which obviously most seasons, as a Missouri fan, we usually don't have that. We've had it before. Hey, we've had Steve Stepanovich before. We've had Michael Porter Jr. for four and a half seconds. We've had Doug Smith. We've had Keon Dooling. We've had guys who've gone in the lottery, but that isn't most seasons. But this kind of style, this is the type of style that can yield very good offense and just good team basketball year after year after year after year. Honestly, I don't know. So far, Missouri is 34th in adjusted tempo in the country. Again, that's, that's compared to 260 last year, over 300 teams in Division I basketball. So obviously, Missouri is getting up shots much more quickly than they did before. But to me, what I'm really noticing is that Missouri just isn't messing around. They get into their offense so much faster. The time they spend in the backcourt is almost nil. Just notice how quickly Missouri gets into its sets and is in attack mode 
already. There's none of this like, oh, there's 18 seconds on the shot clock and they haven't even done anything yet, as we saw far too often the past few seasons. I really like that. And then defensively, it's the exact opposite. A lot of Missouri's pressure is predicated on forcing the opponent to take too long to get across. And even if you don't force a 10-second violation or a a turnover of some sort, well, if you're starting your half-court offense at the 22-second mark, that's a big advantage for your defense. So just all the little things so far, I love what Dennis Gates and the staff are doing. And the fact that he's been able to establish this type of team this early is just really impressive to me. I still am not sure exactly how good this team is going to be. I think they're in the middle of the pack right now with a whole bunch of teams, in my opinion, in the Southeastern Conference. How all that's going to shake out, I'm not totally certain, but for him to have established this type of entertaining and pleasing basketball, I just think that the longer the continuity is established, the longer this culture is established, and the more you have actual players from Missouri who've played with Dennis Gates for multiple years. You get higher levels of talent. I'm just telling you, there's no reason to not be optimistic about Missouri basketball right now. And that is a really, really great place to be. So with all that being said, thanks again for listening to Locked On Mizzou and definitely check out Lost. That's Locked On Sports today on this app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts, the big games, the big stories, the take of the day, insights from those of us at Locked On. It's what you've come to expect from this fabulous network. Locked On Sports today, no exception. So, until next time, and yes, it's going to be a little sporadic here on this Thanksgiving week, so no promises, but you're going to get more content coming up without question this week right here on Locked On Mizzou.